Good morning and welcome to MarketCast 20. There's a bit of an issue here with 20, isn't it? Because it's market cast. We've, we've adopted Roman numerals just to demonstrate what a classy webcast this is. And the problem with that is that market cast 20 is actually market cast XX. So you have to be very careful how you search online for this market cast. You might not get the results you want. And in fact, over the next 30 minutes, when I talk about how the market's gonna move, over Q2, Q3 and into Q4, you might also not get the results you want. But in the meantime, it's spring. Spring has very definitely sprung and I broadcast to you this morning from a very sunny Bournemouth. It feels like spring is right there. We're in the offices of AF Oliver here in Bournemouth. Uh, and a quick word of warning, one of our team, one of our team, we're one man down, or one woman down actually, uh, who's hors de combat, and another member of the team is just about running on fumes. So if you hear a cough in the background, we'll let that one pass. But more important things to do, and hopefully if you saw the promotional email that I sent out earlier this week, you'll be wondering what on earth is the Diplodocus all about? Why the feature of the Diplodocus? Well, you may well ask, and I hope that by the time we've run through the next 27, 28 minutes, and I've got you off to work with a head full of facts and figures and a few opinions too, you'll know what a Diplodocus market is all about. Now, back in the 90s and the early 2000s, Martin Sorrell, that denizen of the advertising industry, coined all these terms, didn't he, about how the economy was moving, things like a bath-shaped recession or a V-shaped recession, all this sort of thing. Well, right now I'm going to do my own, I'm going to coin my own term, uh, uh, copyright TM, Matt Fleming. Uh, it's a diplodocus market we are facing over the next 12 months. <laughs> let me try, let me try and explain to you exactly what I mean. First of all, set the scene out for where we are. Uh, it really is a little bit of a one step forward and two steps back market right now. Uh, I call it the Diplodocus because we saw a lovely little rise up into March and I think we are going to see a tricky summer ahead. So we're going to see a bit of a slide down summer ahead. There we'll, we'll see that autumn bounce. We don't know what the election date's going to be yet. And so we'll see a flattening out before the end of the year. It could, you could call it roller coaster, I guess. But in the meantime, we've got some issues we're facing. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, the inflation numbers came out yesterday. We saw the, three, the fall from 3.4 to 3.2%. And if I'm going to be honest, that's not as good as most of us were hoping. And I truly believed, and in fact, I might have said this last month, I thought that we were going to see the March numbers begin with a two rather than a three. That's a disappointment. And of course, what that means is our prospects of there being an early interest rate cut are sadly significantly diminished. Something we'll cover a little bit later on in this presentation. I've even included for the second market cast running a couple of charts from the RICS survey because they are on the Diplodocus run already. Market moves up, market moves down, market moves up. We'll have a look at that too before the half an hour is out. But the bottom line is that the consumer confidence barometer is sat in a depressed state right now. There is a lot of uncertainty going on, something that we'll cover too. So right move index, I've not included in, in this presentation because it's coming out on the 22nd, so it's due at any moment, a little bit old hat at the moment, but when it does come out, please remember, we're talking about asking prices there, but why, the, one of the reasons why I think the April right move numbers are gonna be really important, just one really, really important, is the fact that it will give us a really good indicator of seller sentiment. And quite honestly, that's all that asking price movements give us, is how sellers are feeling, how confident they're feeling about uh, getting their properties away at a slightly higher price. Now, I have had one or two accusations that we are not actually broadcasting these market casts live. Well, to prove the point, not only right now, <coughs> excuse me, 
not only right now is it 8.34, uh, but also one of the things that actually came up in the news this morning that I otherwise couldn't possibly have heard about was, of course, the Foxton's announcement of their Q1 results. That's important for us because it gives us a little bit of a feedback on how the market is on the ground. I try very, very hard indeed. I'm fully aware that we've got a national audience uh, for this market cast. So I avoid whenever possible being Southeast centric and certainly not being London centric. But we all know that the old saying, if London sneezes, the rest of the UK eventually catches a cold. And Foxton's is a good barometer for the London market. And they have published their Q1 numbers this morning. And I've got to tell you that their sales are up 17% over Q1 last year, revenues up 9% over Q1 last year, and really importantly, only still only one really, their sales agreed are up 31% over last year's number and their under offer is up 34%. So uh, that really gives the indication of that first quarter uptick that I've been talking about since last December. I still think we're gonna be facing some issues as we come into summer. Let's get into the detail. As far as the media is concerned right now, I'm sure you picked this up yesterday. Yes, inflation in March is all about meat and crumpets. Uh, apparently they are the two commodities that have been driving the number down. But unfortunately, those owner-occupier housing costs, what, what the ONS, the Office of National Statistics call, I nearly said statistics there, didn't I? Call the uh, the uh, OOH costs are being very sticky, uh, and those stayed up there at 3.8%, and it meant that the fall in inflation that we expected last month, given that fuel prices are falling as well, was nowhere near as significant as we had hoped. So despite the fact that this was off the BBC website yesterday, inflation hits a two and a half year low as meat prices fall, not good enough for us. We wanted it below three. Uh, here's the other thing that has been tapping on the back of my head over the last six months, in fact, that's the employment market. And for those of you that track my market matrix, and we will do the market matrix at the end of this presentation, you'll know that that employment market, that hot employment market has been moving down and down and down and to the left as we've gone on. And I think we're probably in certainly no better than neutral territory with the employment market right now and possibly even into negative. So this is something that is worrying me. This is a story out of yesterday's Guardian. Um, as far as the trade press is concerned, I found this really interesting. In the negotiator earlier on this month, they ran a quite a big story on uh, some research that Winkworth, the estate agents Winkworth uh, uh, commissioned, uh, talking about how the election was going to affect the market. And let me save you having to read that entire report because I can do that. In fact, if you, if you watch last month's market cast, I've already done it. But the bottom line is we are going to see a depression in volumes. I'm absolutely certain of that. History, history tells us so as we run up to the election, which I'm guessing is likely to be in the autumn, probably November. But in terms of prices, not a massive effect. You know, they, you know, people talk about the disappointment that there wasn't an election bounce after Boris uh, was elected. This is the one that they're talking about back here. The thing is that prior to the change of leadership elections, which has characterised the last couple, uh, we did see, we did used to see a little bit of price uptick. Uh, now, call me old fashioned, call me a soothsayer, but my crystal ball suggests we may well have a change of party leading the country after the next election. And I think that will affect prices. And I think that will bring an uptick in prices as we come to the end of the year. Uh, over here, very interesting poll that the estate agent today, daily uh, news site, online news site, published yesterday, uh, they did a reader poll with all their estate agents readers uh, asking them if they felt that prices were falling or prices were staying the same. And again, just to sort of encapsulate what they're actually saying in there to save you having to read the whole thing. I don't know whether you saw recently, there was a fascinating debate between a guy called Charlie Lambdin 
uh, Moving Home with Charlie uh, and Russell Quirk, who are property PR. Uh, are, but they both sit on either sides of the, the fence on where the market is going. Charlie believes we're all going to hell in a handcart and we're going to see a peak to trough reduction of 35% within the next 12 months uh, from going back from two years ago. Uh, and Russell Quirk believes the opposite, that the, you know, all the news and the indicators are good. And I think the truth probably sits somewhere in the middle along the Diplodocus thing. But it was interesting that estate agents today use that to actually gauge the mood out there amongst the estate agents. So if you like, it was almost an, an informal little RICS survey. And if you're looking in here for how they all felt about it, essentially you had about one in five of these agents saying that they felt prices were falling on their patch. But crucially, about 50% of them saying that prices weren't moving at all. And, and that, that for me is it. I think if you look at the national picture up and down the country, there are some hot spots where prices are even actually moving ahead a fraction. Uh, but generally, the, the, the real get down and dirty and do the deal sort of thing suggests that prices aren't moving at all. I have unusually included three slides in this deck from the property mark survey. The property mark survey, I think, is a good one. They're again, talking to the estate agents, and they're right there at the sharp end. This was a slide that I put in last month. This was their January numbers. And the reason I've included, left it in this deck, I wanted to show you the contrast in between last month and this month. Look, the increase in number of uh, market appraisals undertaken, January, 129%. Crucially, 80% uplift in new properties coming to the market and 120% increase in number of registered buyers. Have a look at this month. Here it is. Um, market appraisals flat. Increase in new properties coming to the market right down to 18%. Nothing more than seasonal that you'd expect. And crucially here, a decrease in the number of potential buyers registered. Regular viewers of this market cast will know that I have been saying for some time, we're gonna have our March uptick and then we're gonna have a quiet summer. And it genuinely appears to me, looking at these property mark numbers, that that is what is in prospect. And if you look at, I don't wanna bore you with all these charts, but the, the good thing about this is that they do give you a quite a clear idea of trend. So these are prospective buyers registered. Don't worry too much about where the chart is going in terms of detail, but look at the trend. Uh, and that goes back to November 2021. That's uh, prospective buyers registered. And over here, these are the average numbers of viewings per available property. And you can see here's the trend starting up here, April 2022, just under five. Down here, uh, this is the February numbers just under two. So that gives you a sense of where we are. There's a, oh, there's a deep breath, isn't there, right now about the market. Uh, finally, just look, have a look at it. This is the number of sales agreed per market branch. So this uptick here, December, January, February, is a result of the higher level of activity back here. It's the March uptick that we talked about. So that, for me, absolutely confirms that we are on the right track with where we think it's going. And of course, so much of it stems back to here, doesn't it? Inflation. So these were yesterday's numbers, and you can see where we are, 3.4 to 3.2. This one here has actually got the numbers on. So, so you can see CPI, which is the number that all the newspapers publish, 3.4 to 3.2. But the number that the Office of National Statistics prefer, and they say that they prefer, is CPIH, because that includes homeowner costs, so that includes the cost of a person's mortgage, that includes insurance, home insurance, and so on, maintenance and, and, and renovation. It includes all those costs. And that stayed at 3.8%. There's our problem. It's that sitting in there sticky inflation that, that, that the uh, Bank of England are so concerned about when it comes to reviewing interest rates. And it's not just us on this little island, is it? It's a global picture. Uh, inflation right across the world. Everybody thought it was going to come really tumbling down as we came into summer uh, and, and the issues that came up back in February 2022 when Russia invaded Ukraine were going to fade into the background in terms of their effect on the economies of the Western nations. 
but it's been sticky. It's been tricky. And uh, the, the economies generally tend to get led by the US. And if you look over there, it gives you a really good idea of what's going to happen over here. And interest rates have been slow to fall. Crucially for us, crucially for us, in terms of, and when I say for us, I talk about the UK property industry and developers in particular, that when you look at wage inflation and you match that against uh, 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 general inflation, you can see where wage inflation is. It is starting to come down and it is sitting up here. Uh, and the very latest numbers, again, that came out yesterday, we can see that wage inflation generally is around 5 to 6%. In this little one down here, what they do is they take wage inflation, they subtract general inflation, and that's then what you've got here is this real inflation. So this net pay inflation, and that is still sitting over one and a half percent. Generally, people that are working are about one and a half percent better off. This is very important as far as we're concerned in the industry. The worry, of course, is that all of this feeds through into here. No need for me to go into detail. You can see the shape of the snake. And this was, this was the trend that we were all expecting. And I showed you the Bank of England numbers that were forecasting forward five years, saying that they would expect interest rates still to be around 3%. That's the number we need, by the way, to get us so that on current price levels, that the uh, share of or the income ratios uh, for somebody to buy on an average income to buy an averagely priced house comes back down to that long run average that we need it to be, which will see the market stabilize and see us return to 1.2, 1.25 million transactions a year. And right now, it's not showing a lot of signs, is it, of coming back down there. These are all two year fixed mortgages on various loan to values. And you can see that they range from around six down to the to the early fives down there. And here on a, a loan to value of 75 percent with various different terms. Well, you can see quite clearly that the lower figure down here is on the longer term mortgages. So the longer term uh, fixed term, sorry, I should say, because the markets and the institutions believe that over the longer term, we will see those interest rate falls. But you can see in the shorter term, they have upticked because that's how they believe. I think they felt that they went a bit too early. Inflation is a bit too sticky and interest rates aren't going to be coming down as soon as they thought. So where does that bring us in terms of consumer confidence? It brings us here. That's where it brings us. A, a, a very interesting top line. Come back to that in a moment or two. The red line, as I'm sure regular viewers of this market cast will know, is the overall index score. Regular survey, 2,000 people. What do you think is going to happen over the next 12 months? Are things going to get better or worse? This is zero here. Any score below that line means it's a negative overall outlook. And here's the red overall index to score coming from massive record lows after the Trust Quarteng budget back in uh, September 2021. And you can see where we've gone since here. A very slow and very steady recovery under boring Rishi and boring Jeremy Hunt. We needed boring politicians over the last year or so. Uh, trust me. And, and this is where we've come. But it's stalled. Look, you can see how it's stalled. And there is undoubtedly a, <gasps> a little bit of a deep breath moment because of this sticky inflation and because interest rates were expected to fall and then haven't fallen, you know, against a cacophony uh, background noise about where they were going to go and how cheap it was all going to be. Well, you can see it's clearly not happened. And when you look at the other indices, so the green one, the green line there, which is, a, is the next 12 months a good time or a bad time to make a major purchase, that's stalled too. And in fact, that's actually regressed slightly. Where people feel the economy is going, that's that blue line there. Is the economy going to get better or worse? That was on a real recovery from an all-time record low. This survey has been running for 50 years, don't forget. All-time record low after the uh, Kuateng budget. And it's recovered and it's recovered and it's recovered and it's recovered. But it's just stalled here. The one interesting line on this chart is where people feel their own finance is going over the next 12 months. Most important from a real, again, record low, right back down here. Look, it nearly touched neutral back here uh, in, in summer 2023. And it, you can see it's 
been bouncing along and it broke up into positive territory for the first time since pre-COVID. So here we are, March 24, into positive, positive territory, and that really is a very good sign. Uh, let's hope, let's hope, shall we, that we see those indicators help us on our way. So let's have a look at the key dates, as we always do. Something for us to set our diary by. Uh, the next set of inflation figures, well, as you know, the inflation figures only came out yesterday. Next set is back, uh, is not until May 22. Um, there, the MPC meets at the beginning of the month, or just in, a week into the month, on Thursday the 9th of May. I would be amazed if interest rates move at that meeting. I, you know, I, I don't know about putting my house on it, but certainly it would be a real shock. Unless something external happens that drives it, it would be a huge surprise if interest rates move. The big meeting is going to be the following month, June the 20th. That's the fingers crossed. Uh, if it, since Gordon Brown moved responsibility from the Treasury to the Bank of England to decide on interest rates, uh, you really do have an independent view. If this was still politically driven, with the election coming up in the autumn, you could be sure we'd, we could be much more certain about an interest rate fall. I think that's a fingers crossed. A lot of things to happen before then. And then, of course, there's the election, which we think is probably going to be in the autumn. So the key data then, my favourite chart in the world, showing me how the market's moving. Deals done at or better than asking price. This, this, is, this was how the market came down, the growing grey, the growing grey. Look, these are deals done below asking price from our fantastic peak, this extraordinary peak at the top of the market back in spring 2022. And then the market transitioned, didn't it? And we can see absolutely graphically depicted the transition in the market so clear. And here it came. And then we... We came along the bottom of here and suddenly these green shoots started to appear. You all felt it. You all felt it. January, February, into March, definitely you all felt that, that better market going on there. Volumes upticking, average sale per life site upticking. And I think there's been a little bit of a regression. And it's interesting, when I saw these numbers for the first time this week, it's interesting to see that the deals done at asking price, orange there, Still a few above asking price. I don't know how that happens. That must be some property there. Uh, but you can see that's then started to come down and I think that is us ready for our tricky summer. Here's my at or above asking price line. Here was that lovely March uptick that we were talking about. And here's the regression that I anticipated. Mortgage approvals continue to recover, but it's a slow recovery. It's a slow and a painful recovery. If you actually look at the March numbers here, we, uh, sorry, the February numbers here, we got up to 60,000 mortgage approvals. We would normally expect that to be closer to 70,000 if we're gonna get the sort of volumes that we would uh, anticipate in a pre-COVID year. Those classic 2014 to 2019 years, don't forget, there's a larger percentage of cash buyers that helps that along. But still, this is pointing towards volumes of around a million uh, transactions for the year, some 20% down on the pre-COVID numbers. It's tricky. A lightning run through the indices because I know you're all waiting for me to get to the Diplodocus, and I will, I promise. Quick, quick look then. Nationwide came out with their March numbers. You can see they're still in positive territory for the year at 1.6%, but the monthly change, a tiny drop for their March numbers, virtually flat. I love the three month on three month. That's a much better indicator of the trend and the way the market's actually moving. And you can see this was our recovery and our spring uptick. And you can see that flatten out as we come into spring, completely as expected, nothing unexpected in there. This was the chart I was talking to earlier. This is where we need to be, somewhere down here. Uh, and of course, um, that, you, we get there in terms of the share of income required by the other factor, which is interest rates. So when we have very low interest rates, then we see this above this average line. So either prices have got to fall or interest rates have got to come down because we need to maintain our position on that line. Otherwise, well, well, it's a quite, it's a, it's a clear and obvious equation. The Zoopla numbers, that nice hybrid of asking prices, mortgage approval, sold prices, you can see it's flat. It's virtually flat. No surprises there. It's what the other indices say too. But if you look at their 
their excellent year-on-year -year key data chart here. Buyer demand still up just fractionally on where it was last year. Sales agreed almost 10% up on where it was last year, sort of reflect the numbers that Foxtons are talking about. Uh, flow of new supplies, 11% up, more liquid in the market, more liquidity in the market in terms of uh, what's available for sale. And you can see the stock of homes for sale is up almost 20%. I think there's some encouraging numbers in there. The other thing that we have to, to, to consider when we're talking about where prices are gonna go is the rental market. And we see this, this current market as a, against the backdrop of a rental market that is going absolutely bonkers. So here, sitting in here, is our average UK price with its little spring uptick. But here is average rental prices. And they really are red hot for all sorts of reasons that we haven't got time to go into in this brief market cast. I promised you, didn't I, that I would include a couple of slides from the RICS March survey. Uh, and I have, and I have, uh, and in here, I think the most important slide that they've got is their price expectation. So these are all the RICS members doing their monthly survey, saying where they think prices are gonna go. So in terms of this, chart over here, the azure line, the dotted line is where they think they're going to go over the next 12 months. The darker blue, the little mauve line here is where they think they're going to go over the next three months. It's Diplodocus time. Look, because over the next 12 months, the majority of agents believe that they will see prices higher than they are now. Over the next three months, the majority of agents, and these are valuers, don't forget, believe they're going to see prices lower than they are now. There is nothing in there that is surprising me that is endorsing everything that we've been saying. And if you look on a regional basis, with the exception of Northern Ireland, Scotland, and uh, the, the northern part of England, you can see that generally the surveyors around the UK are pessimistic for short-term prospects, the next three months. So if you are determined that you are going to sell in the next three months, you need to be really careful how you price your product. Let's have a little look then about values, values and volumes over the remainder of this year. My market factor and matrix, are, I've used April, I've kept April sort of steady as a nice anchor and reference point to how things are moving. It's a good way of showing where we've come from and where we're headed. And that, of course, now is a year ago. Where has that last year gone? My goodness. Uh, this is where we were back last April. This is where we currently are. Do you remember earlier on, I was talking about the uh, hot employment market. Let me just, um, if I can, technology will allow. This is where we were last April with the employment market here. Have a little look where that's gone. And this has a extensive, a substantial bearing on the property market. And that is actually sitting down here, much lower impact, because it's not bad yet, but it's starting to shift into negative. We need to keep an eye on that. It's gonna have a tangible, a direct, and a noticeable effect on the property market. You can also see I've moved consumer confidence just slightly back and just slightly negative from its center point because of last month's results. I'll be very much looking forward to uh, this month's numbers, which are due out in about 10 days time. Homeowner running costs have moved into negative slightly. Supply and demand, I've moved back and I've moved slightly into negative. This was one that was right up here a year or so ago. And you can see there the stamp duty changes now pretty much virtually forgotten. General inflation still coming down. I've moved that into a positive because it, it, it is still getting smaller. <laughs> Don't forget, that doesn't mean prices are coming down. It just means that the rate they're, go they're going up is slightly less fast. Uh, and, and so it's in positive, but still lower impact. If that had started with a two yesterday, this would have been up here, I'd have moved this up here. Still here the power of uh, bucking the market trend, of gaining additional market share over second hand in particular, sits with the developers, with discounting asking prices, with part exchange, which is a hugely valuable weapon right now, and with financial products. Lean into your IFAs, get them to be creative and to help you construct the deals that your purchasers want and sat in this nasty place here, the bottom right hand corner, the place we don't like to talk about, 
high mortgage rates still unshiftably too high and low affordability. That's what drives where I think the market's going. And, but it's not changed, has it? I'm, I've got to say, okay, the height of these, the dark blue, this is the nationwide index. This is the rate of annual inflation. The red line is the average, national average price according to the nationwide. Nothing, there is no such thing as an average price. You can't tell somebody that's trying to sell in Barrow in Furness that they should think about what the average price might be in Hearn Bay. It just doesn't work. Every single market around the UK is different. But in terms of sentiment and where the market's moving, this is a useful guide. So here is the dotted line is where I believe the average price is going to go. The solid line is where it's been. And the same with the dark blue, light blue. This has barely changed. OK, these bars have got a little bit higher. The spring uptake was even higher than I'd expected, a little bit higher. But this is where I think we're going. Uh, this is where I think we're going in terms of average price. We're going to end up just under 260,000 for the year. And so those of you who have said, why on earth are you calling this a diplodocus market? Watch this, because this is technology at its very best, at a cost of many hundreds of thousands of pounds. I commissioned a team of experts to introduce a prehistoric element to this forecast chart. Are you ready for this? There he is. There he is. It's Donald the Diplodocus showing you exactly why I call it a Diplodocus market. Just look how I believe the average price is going to behave. <laughs> I'm making one of our team laugh down here now, and that's not helping her cough. And uh, so you can see this is where the market went right up the dinosaur's head. Uh, this is where we are facing this summer that's ahead of us right now. There is going to be a pickup as we come into autumn. I think there's going to be an election effect. And then I think we are going to see an uptick as we get to the end of the year. Trust the dinosaur. And the thing is that if you're setting out your marketing strategy site by site and market by market and region by region right now, I believe and I, I, I commend it to you as a guide to the way you control your volumes and the decisions you make on how commercial you're going to be with your prices and your deals to get plots away. Trust the Diplodocus. That's what I say. OK, we've, we've slightly overrun. I got carried away with the dinosaur at the end. I was doing so well. But in terms of summary, this is where we are. Every indicator that I can see, every indicator that I trust, point to a tricky summer. I've been saying this, you know I've been saying this since last autumn. It's a tricky summer. I am still confident that we are going to end the year flat in terms of annual inflation when we get to the back end of the year. I, I, there's nothing saying to me, unless there's stuff going to happen, uh, you know, the worrying global things that are going on, the geopolitical things that none of us can have any control over. Uh, and, and if that happens, well, then all bets are off. But as things currently stand, nothing is throwing me out of the forecast that I first set out for you back last December. Monthly volumes are going to fall as we approach the election and, and we go into the summer. Have a think about that. How hard do you want to work at keeping those volumes up? Will you be better off keeping your powder a little bit dry for that dinosaur tail towards you? Honestly, you'll be saying Diplodocus in your next marketing meeting. I guarantee it. So, um, well, maybe not guarantee it. But I think that uh, the MPC, most unlikely that we'll see uh, rates come down in May. Well, I think we're going to need to hang on to that June meeting that I told you about before we see any shift. And even then, that's going to depend on some good background data in the meantime as well. It's a finely balanced market. You will have your own issues that you have to deal with in terms of the volume and the numbers that you need. Uh, and, and you will obviously decide that accordingly. But I really hope that that indication and that keep that picture of that diplodocus in your head because that could be a really good guide to uh, setting out your individual site-by-site -site sales strategy over the next eight months. I um, hope you've enjoyed that. I really enjoyed it. Sorry for running a couple of minutes over. Next market cast, XX120, no, <laughs> market cast 21, we're going to be 21, um, is on Wednesday the 15th of May. And I hope I see you there.